All right, gentlemen, we made way too many mistakes this week, okay? The coaching staff has gone in. We've simplified the game plan. Let's go out here and execute. Hey, we got to execute the win. Here we go. All right, Andy. All right, gentlemen, you must have had your oats this morning because today was a great practice. Coach staff, we can't ask for much more. If you guys consistently do that, we're going to win a lot of ball games. Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned in to the NFL on EA Sports. Here's the man who was a scoring machine last week, finishing with three rushing touchdowns in their win. Hard to imagine he'll be able to duplicate that performance in this one, but he'll give it a shot. It's the Steelers going up against the Eagles. So let's send you up to Pennsylvania. We're standing by in Philadelphia are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Larry. Thank you. We are just off I-95 at the home of the Eagles, Lincoln Financial Field on the south side of Philadelphia. Straight ahead, we've got a good one on tap here between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Philadelphia Eagles. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you look at this Eagles team as they interplay here. And losers their last time out, so they'll look to make amends here. And one of the best ways you can do that is to be at home, and they are. They're gonna try and ride that home crowd and that wave of emotion to a victory in this one. Meanwhile, for the visiting Steelers, it's been a great start to the season, back-to-back -back wins to begin the campaign. Yeah, you don't wanna to get too excited. There's still a lot of season to go, but they've come out playing good fundamental football, and that might carry them a long way.
And on the ground they go with a running back. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. And that's definitely the way you get things started. That's the way it was drawn up in the locker room, in pregame, and everything. And they got it done right away, running the ball for a big game. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he is going to lose yardage here. The loss of a full three yards. And now it's second down. To him right up the gut. And he showcases the spin. A pretty good game before he's taken down. Nine good yards here on the run, and now third down. Third down now following the run. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long distance situation, they can. So on fourth down, here's the veteran left-footed punter Donnie Jones to kick it away. It's taken to the 26. Well, it wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. The best way to do it? Touchdowns. Second down, eight. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. Nine yards on the pickup there, and it keeps the drive alive. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. They come out here in the eye. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. Oh, he breaks a tackle, and he's got an alley. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. Well, plenty of credit has to go to the guy carrying the ball. He broke the tackle and gained the yardage. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the defender's bad. They're not going to make 100% of the tackles all the time. Even the best in the game will miss one occasionally. The key is not to let it snowball and miss tackle after tackle. On that play, credit to the offense, but that doesn't make the defense bad. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. And they'll go with the ground attack here. And he'll keep it moving down to the 15-yard line. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. We are watching a runner having a really nice game. Carrying it very well. Vision is excellent, but boy, look at the help he's getting. Offensive line, I think they're pretty eager to block for him. And they'll go on the ground. A really nice pick up of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. And the tackle's made there by one of the secondary members. And I can guarantee you, having played that spot in the huddle right now or on the field, 
They're urging for a little bit more support from the guys up front. I actually remember one game where I hopped over a defensive lineman to make a tackle downfield and realized Back with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's Steeler football to begin quarter number two, and they've got it here with a first down. touchdown of the season and the Steelers are going to add on to their lead and he was excellent on that drive he deserved to be the one to get across the chalk oh I agree with you totally a workhorse up now after the touchdown it's Sturgis to send it away And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. We focus our attention now on the Eagles' defense. Last drive, touchdown, surrendered. Here, see if they can stop us. It's always a constant battle of letting the last series go, good or bad, but especially bad. Give up a touchdown. Okay, forget the finger pointing, forget the blame. Go back out and play the defense you know you're capable of and help your team out. And probably look to the leaders, as always. As always. They're, they're going to be the ones going to grab some people and say, all right, let's do this thing. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Second down following the run. Now a handoff here to his running back. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. This guy is well on his way now to a big game on the ground. It's another good run there. Puts him over the century mark in yardage, and we're still in the second quarter. And they'll run it here. He finds some open field here. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. He's quite an eyeful, isn't he? Big, strong, physical guy. When he came out of school and when I looked at my draft board, I went back through my notes to see how I had him rated. The number two back on my board coming out of college. Why? As I mentioned, big, strong, powerful guy. Faster than you would think. And has the ability to catch the football out of the backfield. Something that we didn't know he truly possessed. We saw that in the offseason workouts. Now he's putting his running ability to good use in the NFL. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. They come out here in the eye. And on the ground they go with a running back. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Brief break in the action here. We'll come back to Philadelphia after this. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Larry Ridley will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. See if they stay on the ground for second down. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a Bobby Bros guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. Well, they're certainly running the ball pretty well on this drive, and all I remember as a secondary guy was if you're making a lot of tackles in a game, that's usually not good for your defense. You've got to figure out how to keep things in front of you because you know there's three levels, defensive line, linebackers, and into the secondary. And if the third level is leading your team in tackles, as a general rule, things aren't going so well for your defense. Second down following the run. Now a handoff looking right. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. It's a 10-yard gain there, and it sets him up now first and goal. 
We really didn't have any doubt that he was going to be one of the top-rated rookies coming into the league, especially as a runner, and he's given us no reason to change our minds. That's a big-time run, and the production that he showed us in college is translating very well into the National Football League. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the 10-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. Oftentimes, when a guy has a game like this, he's going to take his offensive line out to dinner afterwards, but after a play like that, he may tell them, instead of getting the steaks, guys, we might have to go for the hot dogs. Second and goal to go now. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. A great play there in the final seconds of the first half. And the Steelers find a way to stretch their lead. That's one of the better examples of clock, man. Now, after the touchdown, it's Sturgis to send it away. This is taken just shy of the 10 here. And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And that last drive... It was all about the ground game, ground and pound. And I don't care how we're playing the game these days, offensive linemen still want to fire out and smack the guy opposite them and move the football on the ground. They feel better about that. That's what they want to do. That's how they want to play, and that's how they got it done. Yeah, they got it for a touchdown last drive. Let's see what happens here. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. And to give this time to the tailback. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Not too many more ideal situations in second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. And they'll go ground game here with the tailback. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And that's exactly what you run on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he's brought down. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. I know anytime you watch a team run the ball really well, there's some pinball effect, people bouncing off of each other. There's also some things of beauty in there when you see these nice, explosive, strong runs. And this guy, he knows how to carry the football really well and continually wants the football. Why? He knows the offensive line's going to give him great effort, and he gives great effort himself to finish off runs. And welcome back. We are in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And a cut to the left sideline. And he's brought down, but not before reaching the eight-yard line. That one goes for 24 yards. We could talk about bend, but don't break all we want. But the defense now, we're going to find out just how flexible and pliable they really are. Can they bounce back after that type of a run, that type of momentum against them, and find a way to slow down this offense? And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. A great effort there. His third touchdown of the game, his eighth on the year. And the Steelers are going to add on to their lead. He keeps carrying the ball into the end zone, and in this one, he's sort of carrying the team on his back. Now, after the touchdown, it's Sturgis to send it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five yards with a new rule as he's taken down right at the 20-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And it's a unit last drive 
They did it all on the ground, Charles. And they controlled it from the interior. Big on big, right? Offensive lineman versus defensive lineman. But you know, in order to keep the football moving downfield, other people have to get involved as well. Your wide receivers, your tight ends, lead runners, anything that you have possible to get in front and keep the ball moving. And now the defense may be looking out for a pass coming up. All the elements of what you want out of a play came together on that one. A really nice run, took care of the football, and even more importantly, taking the clock under four minutes now. At this stage of the game, how do you bleed out the clock, take care of the ball, and make sure the other team doesn't have a chance to come back on you? You're looking at your sheet, how many timeouts are left, how many runs do we need to close it out? That's what the coach is looking at right now. Situational football, trying to gain a victory. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's going to take this one down inside the 45. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. I know that every now and then we get in those meetings with coaches, and you almost want to roll your eyes when they talk about staying on schedule when they're moving the football. But would you say a seven-yard run is ahead of schedule? Fourth quarter with a lead, you love that, don't you? No doubt about it, because staying on schedule is trying to get four downs on first down. They did that plus three. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Now a handoff here to his running back. And now the Eagles going to signal for a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Seven yards to go on second down. And to give this time to the tailback. And he's going to get this inside the 30. And the Eagles are going to go ahead and take another timeout. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. So here we go, first and 10 now. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 to the 5-yard line. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. And now the offense operates in the red zone. They come out here in the eye. Five yards to go for the offense. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. A great play there with a career-high four-touchdown game. And that rushing touchdown, his fourth, puts him just one shy of the NFL record in a single game. And we all know he would love to... The Steelers' offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And now last drive, so successful with the ground game, ending in a touchdown. Do you stick with that formula? That would be the number one thing you would think of, but so many guys now would look at it and say, we've got them set up so well for play action, now's the time to take a shot. Yeah. But, you know, there was a big-time coach in the state of Ohio who once said, <laughs> if you throw the ball, if you put it in the air, Three things can happen, and two of them are bad. He would have kissed it on the ground. <laughs> They get nine yards back on the run there, and they're left with a much more makeable third and two. I know the toss play begins with the guy taking the snap and turn around and tossing it to the runner, but where the real intrigue is, 
Can they seal the edge? Whether it's an offensive tackle or a tight end in the direction they want to run the football. If they do that, that's the result that you get, that type of a game. If now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Now a handoff here to his running back. Room here to run. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. And this looks to probably be the final play. Oh, Roethlisberger going to throw. And it's complete to Ladarius Green. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road.